Okay, got it. <laughs> okay, so we are connecting, so we should be live in just a moment. Okay. Let's see. And it looks like we should be live. Let me just make sure. And it looks like we are. Okay, so hello. Welcome to Escondido Public Library virtual author chat series. The series is sponsored by the Friends of the Escondido Public Library and in partnership with Mysterious Galaxy Bookstore. I'm your host, Jessica Buck, and today I am joined by two mystery authors, Jennifer J. Chow and Abby Collette. Thank you, ladies, for being here. I am so excited to chat with you. And just for the viewers that we have, if they um, this is their first time listening to you or finding out about you, I'm just going to read your little introduction so that they can kind of get a sense of who you ladies are and what you do. So Jennifer J. Chow writes The Own Voices, a sassy cat mystery series. She also published the Winston Wong Cozy Mysteries under J.J. Chow. Her other Asian American novels include Dragonfly Dreams, a Teen Vogue pick, The 228th Legacy. Jennifer's short fiction has appeared in the STEM anthology, Brave New Girls Tears, Tells Tales of Heroines Who Hack, <laughs> Over My Dead Body Magazine, and Hyphen Magazine. She's involved with Mystery Writers of America, Sisters in Crime, and Crime Writers of Color. Thank you so much for being here. And our next author, Wall Street Journal best-selling author, Abby Collette loves a good mystery. She was born and raised in Cleveland and it's a mystery even to her why she hasn't yet moved to a warmer place. You can move to California. That's right. Come, come move in with me. <laughs> Along with the ice cream parlor mystery, she is the author of the Logan Dickerson Mysteries, the Southern Cozy Mystery Series, featuring a second generation archaeologist and non genarian who is always digging up trouble. She is also the author of the Romaine Wilder Mysteries, set in East Texas, which pairs a medical examiner and her feisty auntie who owns a funeral home and is always ready to solve a whodunit. Abby spends her time writing, facilitating writing workshops at local libraries, and spending time with her grandchildren, each of whom are her favorite. That's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I won't bring them along when I come to stay at your house. Well, I'll leave them in Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You'll be fine with the blankets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I want to mention to our viewers that we are, um, Jennifer is having a little giveaway. So if you purchase a book by Jennifer from Mysterious Galaxy, you could win a book themed face mask. Oh. All you have to do is send a screenshot of your purchase to Jen at jenniferjchow.com. And that is also in the event description. So that email is right there to enter the giveaway and the winner will be contacted Monday, November 9th. So thank you, Jennifer, for setting that up. So nice. Mm. So let's start with how are you ladies? I know that Abby, you've had a long day and I think me and Jennifer are just waiting for the week to end. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm always happy to spend time in the library. So this is like the perfect end of my long day. Libraries Aww. are the best places. Yeah. So I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> well, virtually you're here. You're here in spirit. <laughs> I, I'm, yes. I guess I'm always at the library in spirit. I'm always either thinking about the library, going to the library. I do my best writing, I think, at the library. So I like being there. I like being there too. <laughs> That's <laughs> why I work in one. <laughs> I want to be there. Our local library's curbside only right now. Aww. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Well, let's get on to the questions. And if anyone watching has questions for the authors, you can just plop those right into the comments and um, we'll get to those as they, as they come up. So the first question for you ladies is why mystery? What inspired you to get into this genre? 
And I guess we can start with Abby. <laughs> well, I love mysteries. I have always loved mysteries. Um, that's just, it's my favorite thing to read. It's my favorite thing to watch on TV. But um, originally I self-published at first and I wrote a book, the kind of mystery that I like, you know, um, girl, um, I had an archeologist just to, of course, dug up something that would change the world, you know, as we know it, if anyone find out, found out. But um, I didn't put peril around every corner and I, I don't swear in my books, you know, and there was no, um, you know, all the grown up stuff that happens in regular mystery books. So it was Dan Brownish like or ish without the, without the drama. And so um, that just didn't, you know, work out with the readers. They were like, yeah, we need some action, you know? So then I switched over to Cozy because Cozy is just, you know, that's me, Cozy. No graphic, <laughs> you know, no graphic violence. Um, murder happens off set usually. And um, amateur sleuths, they, you know, they go around and they figure stuff out and I love fig figuring stuff out. So with my love of mystery, I used to be a, a, a lawyer um, so I was always digging for answers, you know, so that just worked right, right together for me. Um, so that's why I write mysteries. I love so, it. And how about you, Jennifer? Great. Um, so same as in, I really loved mysteries growing up reading mysteries, um, everything from like, you know, Encyclopedia Brown to Nancy Drew. I turned in a short story in elementary school and it was a mystery, right? I think I got an A on it, so, so that was good. Um, and then I just really enjoyed Agatha Christie a lot too. Uh, my mom and I would read those together. So that was a lot of fun. Um, like Abby, I, my first book out to Tutuate Legacy was, um, it was mystery, but it was more like secrets with my family. So not like a straight up mystery, like a cozy. And I actually wasn't quite sure if I could do a whodunit because I just admired the genre so much. But then I thought, well, you know what? I really like reading it. So why don't we just try writing it? And then that's how the Winston cozies came to be. And then I just kept on with it because I love like the puzzle aspect. I love, I love the lightheartedness and just the cozier, cozier parts of the genre. Wonderful. I always love hearing like how authors got into the genres that they're writing. And then some people write in like all the genres. I'm like, good for you. <laughs> but I couldn't imagine doing that. No, me either. Because <laughs> you both write exclusively mystery. So far. Oh. Mostly. Yeah, I have some young adult too, which is like not as mysterious, but usually has some like secretive thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So our the next question is tell us about your upcoming books. Yay. Well, I have um a book coming out. Um this is the second book in the my ice cream parlor. This is the first book, A Deadly Inside Scoop. Um it came out in May. Um and so the second book will come out in March and it is called A Game of Cones. And my books are based on a generational family business selling ice cream. Um, and the main character is uh, Wynn, and she's a reluctant sleuth. She doesn't you know, want to go out there sleuthing, but she has a friend who watches Acorn and feels like she knows everything there is oh. about you know, solving crimes. And basically is happy to have a crime, you know, a crime committed in their small village. So that, that would she be me. Can, <laughs> <laughs> so she can figure it out. Oh yeah, we'll have a lot of fun when I come out there. Um, I love doing that too, that too, digging up answers and things. So um, yeah, so it's a family, uh, a big family, grandfather and um, you know his kids, and then the second, the third generation, which is my character, when they're millennials, and it's a lot of fun because I mean. How can you eat ice cream and not have fun? So. Yeah, I love ice cream. It's one of the things that immediately drew me to the covers. I was like, ooh, ice cream. <laughs> and then Jennifer was like, oh, yes, I love both of these covers. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
great. Um, so mine is the Sassy Cat mystery series. I, you can see them behind me. The first one came out in March. Mimi Lee gets a clue. And then the second one is coming next week. It's coming what? out on yay, November 10th. So on Tuesday. So yeah, oh. it's pretty exciting. Um, but mine is set in Los Angeles. It's the um, a pet groomer named Mimi Lee. And she owns a pet grooming salon called Hollywood. So <laughs> she's a groomer by trade, but she's partnering with her pet cat, who's a sassy talking cat. And they're out to solve cases and uh, clear names and, you know, get justice done. <laughs> I just love it. There's nothing too corny, nothing too punny. Like it's never too much. <laughs> It's never too much. I know. <laughs> oh, I love it. So let's talk a little bit about diversity in the mystery genre. So you can just talk a little bit about it if you want to, or you can just go straight to answering the question of what would you like to see more of or less of in the genre in terms of diversity? In our That's genre, the, I think um, I think that you know before us, uh, Jennifer and myself, and a couple other people, you can pretty much count on your two hands, maybe just one. Authors, uh, contemporary authors of cozy mystery that are of color, but I think you know things are turning around, and um, I think they're making uh, publishers are making an effort you know, mm -hmm. to do own voices like my book and Jennifer's book um, and to to get, you know, diverse reads, which I think is important. You, know, you hear lots of times kids, um, adults saying that when they were kids, they couldn't pull a book off the shelf that reminded them of themselves, that they could see themselves. Yeah. So I think it, it's important because, you know, the world is diverse and that's what we write about. You know, we write about our world and what's in the world and how can you not write about everything thing in every you know in every one so um I think that there's a lot of work to be done probably but uh, hopefully it's going in the right direction and hope it hopefully it will continue to to go in that direction um I like to write a story you know basically that everyone will enjoy I write what I know so my characters are always black because I'm black you know um but I try it's a universal story because you know, people have the same problems, they have the same joys, they have the same ambitions, emotions. So um, I'd like for it to be, you know, you know, a vision in the future that it's not a thing, that it's just It is it what is. it is, yeah. Right. <laughs> so that's how I feel about that. Yeah, I have to agree with Abby. Um, I really think that it's great to have that, the diverse books to reflect reality, the world around us. Um, I'm actually also optimistic, um, especially actually with Berkeley, our publisher, mm -hmm. who they're really investing in, you know, diverse authors and um, helping get those voices out there. And it's, it is really needed. I, I totally agree that I could probably count uh, maybe even on one hand, <laughs> right, the authors mm -hmm. that um, write, especially in the cozy genre right. Um, and write just like, um, mm -hmm you know, from a different perspective than, you know, the, the usual cozies that you see on the shelves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I really agree. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so excited that you two ladies are with me today so that everyone watching can know that your books are out there and your books are available at the library because we bought them and they are available. <laughs> and Thank you. They can, Thank you. And they can buy them from Mysterious Galaxy Bookstore because <laughs> they're available there too. So we got to <laughs> spread the word. Spread the cozy word. That's right. And they're such good books. Oh my, both of them. <laughs> oh yeah. If you like the corny and the cozy and the punny, you're gonna love it. Yeah. Very fun. Well, you know, readings. you need some light reading nowadays. Right. Oh yeah. You know, you need to just get to be able to get lost in a book and smile and enjoy your way all the way through it. You know, before you pop your head back up into the real world. So, mm -hmm. I agree. That's and what, look, absolutely. That's what we give you. Yeah, and the covers. I was gonna say, look at the covers. Even the covers are bright and cheerful. You know, just look at the covers. They're, happy. <laughs> They're so happy. <laughs> 
So we have a Facebook question. Okay. So what is your writing routine? Do you have a set time to start or a special place you like to write? And I'm going to add in if you have any snacks. <laughs> because I think that's a very important question that needs to be answered. That is a very important <laughs> question. So my writing routine is last minute. I wait till the last <laughs> minute. <laughs> it's like I have two weeks left to write a book and I have like 1300 words. I am not, I tell everyone, every time I talk about this, do not follow like my pattern because I am terrible. I have a book now due January 1st and I have two chapters that I wrote like last year, um, to, you know, from, from a, for the editor. And so I need to get it written. And, you know, instead I read Jennifer's book and, you know, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> did other stuff. Right? And I, I was asked this question by a librarian the, um, just last week. I was on some, something about how do I, you know, my writing and everything is set up. And I think you know, my writing atmosphere is clutter, I think, because it seems like if I don't have papers everywhere and, you know, really look like I'm busy, then I don't get much done. And snacks are very important, Jessica. The whole time I'm writing, I need something to munch on. So usually since that can, you know, I could take in a whole bunch of calories doing that. I eat sunflower seeds a lot because, you know, it's a big bag, long, you know, the long skinny mm. bags at our at a gas station around here, you can get two for a dollar. And so, and it's like a hundred calories or something for the entire bag. And I sit and eat that. So yes, snacks are important. Um, it helps me write better. <laughs> so I, um, I am not <laughs> like Abby. I can't just <laughs> wait till the last minute <laughs> and do it. Uh, I, I try to actually make sure I set time in the mornings, especially just because it's easier to at least start off fresh and just have at least a little bit done. I, I tend to write in spurts. So I'll use like a Pomodoro method where I'm like, okay, I'll write for a little bit. And then I, I take a break and then I write again. So it'll feel like I don't have to sit there like all the time, like staring at the screen. And I feel like that helps me just get like more words out. Um, for snacks, I actually don't, I don't eat during when I'm writing. I think maybe because it's too hard to like juggle everything <laughs> and eat at the same time and write. But I do like to have tea. So I have like a mug, mm. especially of green tea. And you know, that helps me just writing and getting the words on the page. I think it's so cool when people drink tea and write. And I want to learn and do that. I want a great big cup with a like <laughs> wide rim, but I just don't do it. <laughs> I always say, I'm going to start drinking tea when I write. That's really cool, I think. I don't know why I think that, but I just think that's such a cool idea to do. Wait, so what do you drink with your sunflower seeds? Or do you I drink water. water. So I usually be a, I used to be a Pepsi, Pepsi addict. I was like addicted to Pepsi. And I, I mean, I could taste it and tell if it wasn't Pepsi and it had to be really cold. <laughs> and I, I remember my kids were little, they're very old now. I, they've probably on social security by now they're so old but when they were little I used to in the summertime I'd wake them up in the mornings in those days everyone walked to the store to get me Pepsi so you know so now I don't I try not to to drink it so I drink water for the most part um sometimes um so I like juice but it's too sweet and so this is like mm -hmm. a, a weird quirk about me so I fill up, I always like get a big tall glass. I fill it all the way up to about this much with water. And then I pour the juice in. My niece says it's just colored water. That is not really, I'm drinking juice. So sometimes I do that. But I, and also I like to listen to music. I love music while I'm mm. writing. Um, and sometimes, you know, I listen to music with words and sometimes the words make it, make their way into my um, I was going to ask if you have like soundscapes or if you listen to music with lyrics. I like 1960s Motown. Ooh. So I'm singing along while I type. And sometimes that's why I say I, the words go in there. Like um, they got a groove you know, to yeah, them now. Yeah, my girl. <laughs> yeah, my girl. And then I think, oh, yeah, I could say my girl right here. <laughs> you know, that, type. Nice. that was just distract me too much. I think I just like sing <laughs> the songs and then not write at all. <laughs> That's why I say no one should do what I do. They, they would never get anything done. 
do you guys have you done any like fun or weird research for your books fun oh mm -hmm. i i did some grueling research when i wrote this book because i had to eat ice cream and it was just like, oh. the hardest thing that ever i had to force myself to <laughs> keep going back and get extra scoops <laughs> You have to taste all the flavors. <laughs> but recently I was trying to, I'm thinking about writing a book and um, it's going to take place in Mississippi. And usually um, I like to visit wherever I'm writing. And so I would have just hopped in my car, you know, if this, if we were in the, the old world where we used to live and, go, and gone down there, but I couldn't do that. So I actually called a tour company and we did a Zoom thing on our phones. And he took me on a, on a tour of the city in Mississippi that I wanted to see. And he kind of just like held his phone out the window, you know, and then he went to monuments and whatever little historical thing. And then I, I did a screenshot and took pictures with my phone. So I, that wasn't grueling either. The ice cream part was grueling. That one was fun, you know, so the, and it was different to take a tour of a city um, on a phone. Wow. That's so cool. Um, we, so for me, uh, it has a lot of pets. So what I'm doing is the research of animals. So actually, I think some of my more fun visits have been to pet cafes. So I've been to, Ooh. yeah. In the, in There's the one nearby and I want to go, but I haven't been able to. Oh oh, what is a pet cafe? So what you is go, that, Jennifer? Well, so you go there and you get to like play with the pets. So like I went to a cat cafe that's nearby oh, nice. and you can adopt, you know, you can adopt the cats, but you can just go in and you can oh, play with them as well. And then you feed them and you just like hang out with the cats. Oh, um, so okay. it's a lot of fun. But I also went to, so last year before everything you know, shut down, I went to Japan and they have like the most wild animal cafes. There. Like there's so many different, like there are, owl pet cafes and they're oh. so we, we I went to one with my family and it was um I got to hold a hedgehog we had we got to feed like a capybara and we had ferrets and it was like you know just like all these different types of animals that you could play with and hold wow wow it, there is a cat and craft cafe that is right by where I live and I've been wanting to go and, and you can actually like adopt cats that are there. But I know that if I go, I will fall in love with one of the cats <laughs> and then we won't be able to take it home. And then my heart will be broken. <laughs> I've never heard of that. I don't know if that's a, um, a West Coast thing or what. <laughs> May, I think we have something like, you know, Petco where they have pets in there. But I don't know about a petting cafe. I'm going to look that up. Yeah, you So should. what's the pet right. and craft one? You do crafts as well as pet. I think it's because they, it's like craft food. I don't know if they actually do oh. Oh. like crafts. I mean, I'm going to look it up right yeah, now. That's interesting. I think they also do like, you can go in because it's separated. The cafe is separate and there's like windows and like oh. a glass door that takes you in where the cats are. And you can sign up to do like mm -hmm. yoga with the cats or like watch a movie with the cats. Oh, idea. Jennifer's cat. Um, no, those are dogs that did yoga in your book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Jennifer, the, I yes. had never heard that. So that's Dog a real yoga. thing, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what about all the other little, I wondered about your book because you had that one when you had to do the squeeze and I was like, is that really a thing? <laughs> no. Oh, yeah, that's um, a thing. When you, <laughs> mm -hmm. well, you have to clean, you have to, that. Yeah, clean the glands of the dog and there are lots of, and they do, I mean, there are other sports, like I think I had um, stand-up paddleboard in my book, right? And people do that with the, with their dogs too. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. I looked this up. In Cleveland, Ohio. No. Afo Gato okay. Cafe. Right now they're only doing takeout, but it's 761 Stark Weather Avenue. Cleveland, Ohio. Oh my goodness. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's. The west side oh. i'm an east sider oh, okay. <laughs> but i am going to check it out next time i you can go outside safely i am going there's to check a that live out. cat can. so that, is that the only one we have that's the that's what came up let me see <laughs> okay that is so weird 
now I'm like, this is going to be like a, a, a black hole of me looking up where all the different <laughs> cat cafes are. Oh. oh, okay, off topic. Got to get back on topic. <laughs> so this is a fun one. So what did you enjoy the most about writing your recent books? And I have a feeling, Abby, it's going to be eating the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> we ate so much ice cream because of course I had to stop at all the ice cream stores I passed um, to see what they did differently. I mean, you know, it's ice cream. I probably could have got, you know, all the information I needed at one, but that didn't, in my mind, I needed more research. So yeah, I think that was the fun part. And then we went to Chagrin Falls. The book is set in Chagrin Falls, Ohio, and that's actually a place. Um, and I had been there maybe, but never with the intent of writing it down. So when I went this time, I was more observant of things. And there is actually a, a waterfall that dissects the, the um, street. Um, and there, the store in my book is a real store that's set right on top of the falls and so I just kind of hijacked that store it's a popcorn store that does sell some ice cream um and you know I just took it and made it my own so that was fun walking around talking to people that lived in Chagrin Falls and doing all the research and they were just so excited and telling me well you have to go here and you have to go there and it really is a small village so you know telling me I have to go to the visitor center it was only like three doors down you know <laughs> or you have to walk to the square which is actually a triangle so that was a lot of fun. Um, I enjoyed uh, going to Chagrin Falls and hanging out and eating ice cream. Well, that sounds nice. ideal. That's some yeah. great research. Yeah, I need to add more food to my books. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, I do that more. Um, I think for me, uh, the latest book actually, so Mimi Lee reads Between the Lines, the one that's coming out, it has to do with like sister relationships. So I, I liked kind of that digging into that aspect of it. Um, and then I guess what I did was, so some of Marshmallow Sassiness is inspired by Garfield. So oh. I got to like go through these like old Garfield comics that I have. And actually I even have one that's like signed by Jim Davis, oh. but, and I got it from a library, like a library book sale. So it was kind of fun to like kind of reread those as well. Sorry, there was a, there was a slight delay. Okay. Let's see, I'm just gonna check Facebook for the questions. Okay, so this is a big question and you can think about like your most recent book or you can think about all of them in general, but what do you hope readers take away from your story? I know it's hard. No. <laughs> Ice cream. <laughs> no, it's what I said before, you know, books are meant for an escape, you know, even, even mystery or suspense books, you know, you just enjoy it and you flip through the page. So I try to put a little humor in my book. Um, these, this, this um, series doesn't have as much humor as some of my other cozy mystery series, but they're still lighthearted and they're fun. And so that's what I want people to take away from my book. I want them to, when they, while they're reading it and when they finish reading it, I want them to smile. You know, it's like, oh, I enjoyed that. Oh, I had a good time for a little while. So that's what, you know, I want people to take away. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Definitely to have just like that fun reading it and going on an adventure in the pages of the book. Um, I also like to sprinkle in a little bit of culture in mind. So I'm hoping that, you know, that comes through and maybe people find it interesting or just, um, just enjoy those aspects of it. And then I guess the other thing about cozies is I just love how, you know, all the endings are really tidy and, it, you know, the justice gets served, bad guy gets caught. And so, you know, I like that sense of, hope and optimism and how you know everything wraps up neatly it might not in real life but in the yeah. books you know everything works out yeah that's a good thing okay and we have another facebook question what is the book that hooked you into the mystery genre and then um i'll, I'll, I'll read the whole thing I remember reading Where Are the Children by M.H. Clark, and since that day, mystery books are my favorite genre to read. 
So what is the book that hooked you into the mystery genre? Well, I, I remember when I was little and I don't remember what she wrote, but I love Beverly Cleary. But after that, I went to school for so long that it was textbooks that I read all the time. So I can't say that there's a book that hooked me. It's just always what I gravitated towards. I, three things I love is mystery and I love time travel and I love books about witches. Um, not necessarily cozy, but or movies about witches maybe. I kind of like those the combination. Are just that I gravitated <laughs> to without, yeah. <laughs> I actually did a book about witches and time travel and it's cozy. So there go. <laughs> um, I <Trifecta>. just, <laughs> just, yeah, it was just something that I liked. Nothing that I think anything had to draw me into. It just was, you know, part of me. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard to pinpoint uh, books. I mean, the kid, as a kid, I think, yes. Um, like I said, Encyclopedia Brown. And then we had Nancy Drew. I had, um, I think Hardy Boys even, and I get older. I would I would say that for Asian mysteries, though, um, once I found um, Dale Furtani, like he does uh, contemporary or he did contemporary mysteries and um, like samurai <laughs> mysteries. But he was like the first author that I realized that wrote like in this field, and I was thinking, oh, that's that's great. Like, I don't have to be Agatha Christie. I mean, not that I could be, but I don't have to like have that like same environment. You know, I can try to, I can explore different worlds in my writing. So yeah, that's hooked me. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And thank you um, to the viewers for asking the viewer, the person that's at both Facebook questions are from the same person. So thank you for for listening and asking those questions. And so both of you, correct me if I'm wrong, you've written both like series and standalone books. Okay. Mm -hmm. So are there any challenges that you find in, in writing like standalones versus series or series versus standalones or it's just, it just comes easy because you're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> easy because I'm amazing we're amazing <laughs> no, I I try to write all my books as a standalone even a series so you could I have one series that has six books and you can pick up any book in the series this is what I think um and you'd be okay you wouldn't have to think oh I'm I'm missing something so basically I write all my books as a standalone as standalone so no it's, it's not any different for me at least mm. I think it's slightly different for me. Uh, the the main difference would be, so you have a series and you have like recurring characters, recurring plays, and it's that balance of writing for the reader. So for the reader who's already familiar with the place, it's like, I don't want to repeat too much and bore them because they already know the backstory behind you know, the whole series. Mm -hmm. But then for the new reader, I want to be able to also recap things for them. So they kind of know where they are in the series as well. They know the characters and they know the background behind them. So I think that's probably the part that would be like difficult in balancing. Yeah. I was going to say, do you like writing series more because you have the reoccurring characters? Or is it just? <laughs> well, you know, it's like, uh, it's like a double edged sword, right? Because it's like, oh, it's great. These characters are so familiar. And then you can like dive right back in. It's easy. But then it's also, you're, like, you're stuck oh, with these, them. Yeah. <laughs> these characters, you know, I, <laughs> I'm stuck with them all the time. <laughs> oh, I love my characters. I never want to leave them. Um, <laughs> that's sweet. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I don't know. I think I like series better. I think readers enjoy series better, um, especially if you're looking to, you know, keep readers engaged and keep them as your fans or readers, because then they look for that, too. So um, you, and even sometimes if you watch a movie or you read a book, you always wonder, I wonder what happened next. You know, I wonder what happened to those characters or, did, you know, did they finish whatever it was they were doing in the book so that's why it's good for a series because then you tell your readers yes this happened next you know so 
Do you have any favorite characters that you've written or are they all your, all your favorite? <laughs> I have two characters that I've used my mother's personality. Um, <laughs> and so those are my favorite. And, and they're two di separate, different, unique characters, but both of them are like my mother. Um, and so she's been uh, gone about 20 years, 22 years or something. So that way I always have her with me. So those two are my uh -huh. favorite. And that's Miss Vivi and Auntie um, Zane. Mm. Those are my two favorite characters. I think my favorite characters are, so I like the humorous ones. <laughs> um, so they tend to be sidekicks, tend to be, but not necessarily. But in this case, Marshmallow is, you know, the talking cat. And I just love being able to, yeah. you know, he has no filter. He can say whatever he wants. He's a cat, <laughs> right? <laughs> so yeah, that's a lot of fun for me. So we have a very important Facebook question in my opinion, okay. from C. Davis. <laughs> okay. So what ice cream flavor do you crave now in November? Chocolate. I crave that every month. Mm. <laughs> Chocolate is my favorite ice cream. Oh, those are all favorites. Now, uh, <laughs> then it's like, wait, ice cream, gelato. Like it's just, yeah. once we get into it difficult question. Yeah. I remember when I was first trying to sell the book, the, um, an editor asked me, well, um, are people, will people come to the, you know, the ice cream store in the winter? I was like, oh, you need to come to Cleveland because we're always in the ice cream stores. <laughs> you know, they're always crowded. It doesn't matter if it's snow outside or not. So yes. Well, it stays colder longer. I think that's cold right. weather is the ideal time to eat ice cream because yeah, right. you can really well, savor it. Yeah. Yeah, it won't melt on you. That's that's perfect, right? <laughs> that's right. That's true. And you can turn the heat on in the car, you know, while you eat it. So mm. you're good. Yes, I agree. Did you have a favorite, Jennifer? Um, you know, it's changed over the years. So I used to love like Rocky Road, and then mm. I think it changed to strawberry, mint chocolate, <laughs> then mint chocolate chip. Um, so now I don't. I'm not really sure. Oh, I did try <laughs> one at the local ice cream shop and it was like a banana cream pie flavor, oh, which also gosh. was really good. Wow. My favorite chocolate has almonds in it. Like Baskin and Robbins is my mm. favorite chocolate almond ice cream ever. So um, I could do a giveaway. You read my book and no. <laughs> I don't, I don't, ice, cream. I don't like ice cream. You buy me ice cream. I'll give you a book. <laughs> uh. I like this deal. <laughs> <laughs> Great idea. <laughs> Ooh, C. Davis says ice cream and hot chocolate. Oh. oh. Yes. Mm. Mm hmm Oh, we're all going to be wanting ice cream now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was just thinking, did I, do I have some in the freezer? I was just thinking, that. do I have some in the freezer? I hope I do. Fingers crossed. Okay, let me see. Now we've started talking about ice cream. I'm just thinking about <laughs> ice cream now. Okay, here's a question. So do you have any books you are reading um, right now that you love and want to recommend to people? Um, I'm not reading it right now, but my favorite book that I've read recently is Celette Ng's um, Little Fires Everywhere, which mm -hmm. I think is maybe three mm. years old, maybe four years old. I'm, I'm not sure. But I just read it. I'm a late comer to everything. And oh my gosh, I just love that book. It was very good. So that's a book that, and it's not a cozy. It's, it's got a little mystery in it, um, but it's, it's very good. And what I love about it is there's like no like big action or anything. It's just like, in the in the day you know in the life of you know, a day in the life of kind of thing but it holds your attention and maybe i like it so much because i wish i could write like that mm. and it takes place in cleveland in shaker heights so nice. that's cool so, nice yeah. uh for me i think well for a darker read i would be i would say angie kim miracle creek yeah, um nice. for a lighter read uh i finished ellen byron's 
latest Cajun country mystery. It's a murder in the Bayou Boneyard. And that was a lot of fun. It's also set around Halloween. So it's kind of like the right time to read it in this season. I love it. And are there any authors that you would want to see get more recognition? All authors, everyone who wants to try to write a book that I wish them all the luck in that. Oh, that's so sweet. Uh, I think for me, I would say also the 2020 debuts group. So these are all authors who've come out this year and released a book. And of course, it's a tough year to do that. (laughs) So um, I would definitely give a shout out for that group. Also, specifically, I would say Kate Lansing. She did the Killer Chardonnay, Killer Chardonnay. book, yeah. which is a fun, cozy wine, cozy mystery. Ooh, yeah, that was it. a good book too. I like. Mm. I enjoyed that book. Yeah, and I learned a lot about wine. I don't drink wine, but I learned a lot about wine in that book. <laughs> so I didn't know anything I, about wine either. <laughs> yeah, but and it's one of those books, you know, that you think maybe I should have a glass of wine, even though I don't drink. You know, I thought, oh. Because I love the way she, you know, talked about it, and so that some was good cool. research. I would be yeah, interested yeah. in that <laughs> research. <laughs> so, what is the number one piece of advice that you would give to aspiring mystery and even cozy mystery writers? Never give up. I started writing um, because I was sick, and I was, um, and I was older. Uh, I think my first cozy mystery uh my first self-published book maybe I was like 56 or 57 and the first time that I was traditionally published I was 60 so it's never too late to follow your dream if that's your passion it's something you want to do just do it you know don't let anyone tell you you can't because you can yeah I would definitely say it's definitely a you know long-term journey so um be aware that it actually might take a while too to you know get published and to to write i also recommend finding community i think it's so important to yeah. to oh. find that like tribe for yourself mm-hmm. and just I agree. have the support i love it mm-hmm. and the so now we're going to move on to the closing questions because i don't see any more any more facebook questions to get to so this is the, the question that I always ask at the end of these chats. And that is, what is your favorite library memory? <laughs> I go to the library every Thursday and they let me use the writer in residence office. And Ooh, I like um, that I, idea. Ooh, nice. Yeah, and I pretend, I pretend to be the writer in residence. But my that's I think that's probably, I think, I don't know. I don't know any fond of any memories that aren't fond of the library. I've always gone to the library. If I needed to do work, I go to the library. Um, at home, I have a, a little office. I have a desktop, a laptop, a tablet. And when I want to write, I go, I'm going to the library. <laughs> you know? So it's like my second home. I love the library. So all my memories are fond memories. Uh, I remember growing up and so we either had to go by car to the library or sometimes we as kids would bike to the library because you know like my, our parents wouldn't have the time or want to take us and so I remember having fond memories of like going there and then going to the library and just spending so much time there yeah. I don't even know like maybe Maybe sometimes they dropped us off and then came back. I'm not sure, actually. <laughs> we spent so much time there. Uh, and then I think also uh, that, so that was where I I saw like the, um, at the time, like Asian Pacific American dis- display for that month. And so I was able to find books by Asian authors, which, you know, blew my mind because I didn't realize that there were, there were Asian writers, I think at the time, because just all the books that I grew up reading um, were did not seem to reflect, you know, who I was. Mm-hmm. And um, so that was actually a really fond memory of mine to discover those books at the library. It makes me happy that our displays work. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 
<laughs> Good to hear, because you never know. <laughs> <laughs> so my last question is just, what's next for you? I'm going to write a book. <laughs> yes, good. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do next. So look out for it, everyone. <laughs> it's coming. Um, so the third in the Sassy Cat Mystery Series for me, uh, it, it's tentatively titled uh, Mimi Lee Cracks the Code. And <laughs> yeah, it should be out in 2021. So that's, that's wow. next for me. Yay. That's great. I'm so excited. I can't wait to check in with you ladies once you guys have another book out and be like, what's going on? All right. <laughs> invite us, yes. invite us back. Yes. Yes. So we can talk about our new books. That's right. Oh, always. And I can't wait for the day when people can we can have in-person programming again. Because yeah. that'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun. I definitely will fly out there. No worries. I need some sunshine in my life. And we got ice cream. And, and we have gelato <laughs> right down the street. We can walk. I will be there. <laughs> I will be there. Oh, thank you so much for joining thank me. This you. has just been so yeah, much thank fun. You. Yeah. Thank you to our viewers for watching, for listening, and for asking your questions. Thank you to Mysterious Galaxy for partnering with us and getting the word out about this chat through social media and their website. I want to remind people watching that you can order books by the authors from Mysterious Galaxy and the link is in the description. Yes. yes and you can also check out books by the authors um, from the library and also through Overdrive, Hoopla, and Cloud Library. Mm -hmm. And another reminder about the wonderful giveaway from Jennifer. So if you purchase a book by Jennifer from Mysterious Galaxy, you could win a book themed face mask. All you have to do is email her a screenshot of your order and send that to jen at jenniferjchow.com. That is also in the description and I'm just gonna paste it again to the comments because you never know. And we hope to see you here again tomorrow at 3 p.m. Pacific time for our next virtual author chat featuring black romance authors Farrah Roshan and Quana oh. Jackson. Oh, I can't wow. wait. I'm oh, so yeah. excited. <laughs> yeah. And you can ask questions um, during that chat too. So thank you all again for watching and we hope to see you here next time. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Thank you.